You are Lord is Lord. You are Lord is Lord. You are Lord is Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Lord of Love. I worship you. Lord, I bless your name. Bless your name, bless your name. You are good God, you are good King, you are mighty God, the great I am, the master of the universe, the beginning, the end. There is none compared to you, Jehovah, this morning. We only bow to worship you, we only bow to give you glory, we only bow to exalt your name, we bow to worship your name, we bow to lift your name higher, we bow to lift your name higher. Somebody lift him higher, somebody lift him higher, somebody lift him higher, Jehovah Lord. This morning, oh God, I lift your name, oh God, I lift. I lift the name of God. I lift the name high above all. I lift the name Jehovah Lord. Every breath that I take, oh God, the moment, oh God, 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 oh God. Somebody be aggressive and begin to exalt him. Oh Lord, beautifier, you are my beautifier, way maker. Miracle working God, the beautifier, the beautifier of our hearts, beautifier of our souls. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I worship you. I adore your name. I adore your name. I adore your God, I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. King. Oh God. My Julie Kane, the way you move. My Julie Kane, the way you move. My Julie Kane, what in the mambo.
your great king, your great king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jehovah, you are great. Watch it, God, you come in the Be unstoppable, God. Reliable, God. Only you, Lord. Only you, your word. Only you is able to do. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I adore your name, Jesus. Somebody exalt him. Somebody give him praise. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship your name. Hallelujah. Somebody just give him praise. Exalt your name, Lord. Lord, we declare that we love you. We declare that you're the good God, the King of Zion, the creator of heaven and earth, the master of the universe. Zaidia yote, unabaki kwa mungu. Dunia yote, inotambua uwepo wako. Maserafi makerubi, wana kwa buni. Why not in our bellies up? What is him away in Takatif? Takatif, 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 Takatif. The great king, the great redeemer. How I love you. I love you, Lord. 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 Where do you lay you lay? Jana Hataleo. Ubadiliki Kamwe. Where do you lay you lay? Maserafi, Makerubi, Wanatambua kwa mawewe ni mungu. Dunia zima, inatambua uwepo wako. Wachawi na waganga wote, wanatambua wewe ni mungu. Baba, sisi tunakwabudu asubu ya leo. Baba, tu na njia kia beleza ko. Oh, mimi na kuabu. Baba, mimi na kuabu. Baba, mimi na ku. Baba. Kabudu Baba, Baba, Ina, 
kwa sauti moja tuungane tuseme baba baba ili la kwa baba Baba, baba, 
Jesus, we worship you. We worship you we today. We worship you, Redeemer Jesus. We thank you. We worship you. We thank you. We adore you, Redeemer. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. We have come to say thank you to you. We have come to worship you, Jehovah. We are approaching the throne of worship to declare that you're worthy of all the worship. All the nations gathers to bow before you, to declare what is you. We join with the elders in heaven. We join, my father, with the four beasts in heaven, declaring that you're worthy. Holy is the Lamb of God. Holy is you, King of kings. Everybody worship the Lord this morning. He deserves our worship. Declare his mighty. Declare his greatness. Declare his worth. Lift up your voice, everybody, and worship the Lord. This morning, we are saying, Father, we have come to worship. We were created that you may worship. And today we have come to worship. We have come to declare of his goodness. We have come to declare of his might. Let nothing intimidate you. Declare who God, your God is. Katika kila hali ya maisha yako. Tangaza mungu wako jinsi ya livyo. Tangaza ukua buwana. Tangaza ukua buwana. Katika maisha yako. Katika hali sako. Katika Yote unaya pitia Tangaza ukua buona Asubu ya leo Tungane na makerafi Na maserufi Na tutangaze Hakika Yeye ni mungu Yeye ni anastrahili Kuabudi wa shiku sote Yeye ni anastrahili Kuinuli wa shiku sote Hakuna mwingine kama ye Hakuna wakufana nisho na ye Yeye ni ya mungu Tunaungana leo Na makerufi na mashobi Mutakatifu ni wewe, mutakatifu ni wewe buwana, mutakatifu ni wewe mfame, mutakatifu ni wewe buwana wa majeshi. Hakuna mwingine wakufananisho na wewe, hakuna mwingine wakuninganisho na wewe. Hakika wewe umeinuliwa, wewe umetukuka, wewe uliechu sana, utukufu ni wako, nguvu ni sako, mamlaka ni yako. Get up to you, what you know I want to worship me by the Spirit of God. Lease you worship Jehovah this morning. He is worthy of our worship. Oh, we have come to worship. We have come to say that you are God. Baba, to not go abroad. Me, oh, yet to tonight, to walk, walk. Now, to set to tonight, walk, walk, walk. Man, I wear me, dear boy. Wear me, dear boy, and I seek your love. No, go away, too. Go, go, say, too. Hey, oh, our strength. It is you who is our strength. It is you who is our refuge. Hey, it is you. It is you. It is you. It is you. We come to say it is you. We have no other but you. Our God and our King. The Master of the Universe. It is you alone who deserve this worship. Because you are worthy from the beginning even to the end. You who have no end, neither do you have a beginning. You are everlasting. Your name is Alpha. Your name is Omega. No beginning, no end. You are beyond the comprehension of human mind. You are high above what our minds can fathom. And in glory, you are lifted. In glory, you are exalted. That's why we have come to declare there is no other but you. There is no other but you. We shall worship you alone all the days of our life. That today I dedicate my life to you to worship you for you may me for worship. I give you worship. I give you worship because of what you desire of me. Receive the worship. It is yours. Omega. Thank you, Jesus. Let's declare again, Baba, to Nakuabudu. Man, Hatuna Jamaling in a secret later to the Kumabudu. We are not Baba. Baby, 
Dari wa vita Baba Nina Nina kwa budu Baba Baba Nina Nina kwa budu Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Oh Heavenly Father, in the Thank name you. of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This morning we have come to worship, to you. worship you. Lord. This morning we have come to honor you. Oh Lord. Let they receive the glory for it all belongs to you. Father, we thank you for what you have in store for us this day. We thank you for you'll never gather the house of Jacob in vain. As you have gathered us today in your presence, we believe you have so much that you have in store for us. We allow you, Jehovah, to take your uh, reign. We allow you, Jehovah, to take your place. We allow you, King of Kings, to do that which you have purpose to do today. We are your vessels. We are in your hands. You are the porter. We are the piece of cream. We surrender ourselves into your hands. Let it be with us in accordance to your will. Father, as we share your word, give us understanding. Open our ears, O Jehovah God. Open our eyes that we may see wonderful things in the word. And open our inner ears that, Lord, we may hear. And let our hearts perceive that which God you want us to perceive this day. We commit everything into your hands, O God, as we pray. Be with us for this sort of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we put our hands together to the King of Kings? Amen, amen, amen. You can have your blessed seats. Thank you so much, worship team too. You can uh, take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What a wonderful day. How have you been? Church, how have you been? How was your week? Uh, my week was great. It was awesome. I'm so much delighted that God has enabled me to be here back again. 
at this wonderful day that the Lord has made, that we may share God's world with us. For those that are watching um, this service online, we want to say you are most welcome. It's a joy to have you with us. It is a joy to have this church without walls. You can be able to attend a service anywhere you are. I have seen some people who are watching from far distances, and we want to say welcome so much, and God bless you. Whatever you are intending to get from the Lord, may you receive it. Let your prayer be answered today in the name of Jesus. My name is Pastor Joseph Mwangi. It is a joy to come to you, and it's a joy to be here to serve the Lord uh, together with you. I want to really thank God uh, for some weeks. We are uh, offering uh, because of uh, some things that happened, but God is God. We are back. Why don't we put our hands together to the King of Kings who have allowed us to get back online. Our viewers who have been watching can be able to join with us in our services. It is a blessing and we can only say thank you Jesus because it's him who has done it. He indeed, he's a God of restoration. Amen. I don't know what I can say. I can only say he's a God of restoration. When um, our gadgets were stolen, we didn't know how we'll get back. But God is God of restoration. He has brought us back and we praise his holy name. Now, let's go back to where we left last week. We were talking about the impact of ungodly altars. Our topic is the impact of ungodly altars, still on the theme of altars, the impact of ungodly altars. And specifically, we are picking six keynotes when it comes to altars. We are just looking at six keynotes about altars. Then we get to the impact of ungodly altars. Last week, we were able to touch on three and I believe today we'll also be able to touch on three. Then next week, God willing, we'll get to Judges chapter number six. And we'll be able to see the impact of ungodly altars in a proper way. This is just part of the introduction the, uh, of the impact of ungodly altars. So I'm just giving you some keynotes on the, uh, on the introduction. Then next week, we'll be able to look at um, uh, the impact from the book of Judges chapter number six. So let's go back to where we left last week. Where were we last week? Who can remember? We are, on the book, so we are in the book of Exodus chapter number 17, and we looked at verse number 8 to 16. Let's go back there, uh, Exodus chapter 17, just to remind you what we said. Then we connect that with um, 2 Kings chapter 3, and the Lord will bless us as we come to the end of the service. Let's read the word of God once again. Exodus chapter 17 from verse 8, the Bible says, Now the Amorite came and fought with Israel in Lephdim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out. Fight with Amorek. Tomorrow I'll stand on the top of the hill with the Lord of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amorek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hul went up to the top of the hill. They went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand. That was the heart of the message. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amorek prevailed. Verse number 12. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hul supported his hands. One on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. The Bible continues to say, verse 13, And so Joshua defeated Amorek and his people. Can you say we'll defeat them? Speak prophetically, we'll defeat them. So Joshua defeated Amorek and his people with the edge of the sword. Verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua. We say it is important to write the things that God reveals to you. Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that our artery brought out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 15. And Moses, praise the name of the Lord. We are talking about what? Altars. I'm altars. What did Moses do? And Moses built an altar and called its name, the Lord is my banner. Praise the name of the Lord. Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. He's a banner of my victory. Verse number 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, 
the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Are you seeing what Moses is saying? That this battle is no longer ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. The Lord has sworn he will be in war with Amalek from generation to generation. Mungu hata hacha kupigana na Amalek. Let's continue uh, with the word. The Bible continues to say, For the Lord has sworn he will be with war with the Amalekites from generation to generation. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, last week we were able to see a few things, some keynotes. Number one, what did we say? Battles are won or lost at the altar. And we were really able to see how Moses and Joshua were fighting together. Moses at the symbol of the altar, up there in the mountain. The mountain, we say, is a symbolic of an altar. Moses was up there with hands lifted. Joshua was with the sword in the battlefield. And because the altar was speaking, there was power that was flowing from the altar to the battlefield, the Bible says, and so the Israelites prevailed. And we said, when you are settled with an altar, when you have an altar that is speaking in your life, there are battles that will be won just because there is a priest and there is an altar that speaks on your behalf. So battles are won or lost at the altar. Number two, we said the success of life, that means the success of your marriage, the success of your business, your personal life success is determined where? Is determined at the altar. So he said, an altar is a very key uh, subject in your life because your life, your future, your destiny is tied to the altar. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, as long as Moses' hands were held up, Israel prevailed. And when his hands went down, the Amalekites advanced against them. The battle is won. Victory is given. Success is achieved when there is power that is flowing from the altar. So your altar must be alive. Your altar must be active so that you can be able to advance against your enemy and so that you can be able to make it in life. And where we stopped, number three, we said altars fight, altars. Altars fight, altars. And we said it's only the strong altar that dominates or influences an area. Praise the name of the Lord. The altar that is more powerful, it dominates an area. Let me just say a few things here. Uh, let me just mention some kinds of altars that are established in demonic world. Some kinds of altars that are established in the demonic world. These are some kinds of altars that can be established in the demonic world to fight godly altars. Because altars fight altars. There are some altars that are erected in the demonic world to fight the altar of God or the godly altars that we have in the land. One of Altars that can be established in an area like where we are today is what we can call territorial altars. Territorial altars, from the word territory. Territorial altars. Altars that are erected to be in charge of a particular region. Madabahu ambayo inainuliwa, ili kaweze kuongea katika maeneo tofauti ama maeneo flani. Altars that are in charge of influencing a particular region or a territory marked for a demonic influence. Territories can be marked for a demonic influence. Just the same way when you buy a piece of land, you mark it. You mark it. The enemy has got a way of marking areas, of marking territories, and he puts some spirits on some altars to man that area. Are we together, church? He put some demonic spirit to man that area. And what gives those demonic spirits power is the altar that have been lifted in that territory. That is called territorial altars. Together with the territorial altars, there are also altars that are called number two, cultural altars. Cultural altars. Altars that are lifted in a certain or in a particular culture. A culture can have its altar that speaks in that community or in that area, a cultural altar. Some of our places, when you go back in the village, you find this place, we are told this is where our fathers worshipped their gods. Or we are told this is a cultural center. And being a cultural center, it doesn't just have the artifacts of the culture, it also has some kinds of worship that used to take place or takes place in that culture. So there can be a cultural altar that is raised to speak to our particular community. 
And sometimes we go there, we celebrate, you know, this is our culture, this is the way we do our things, not knowing that we are bowing to altars that have been erected in our cultures. Let's be careful. Praise the name of the Lord. In some of the cultures, there are things when you want to marry, you are told you must do these things like this, like this, like this, because this is our culture. You don't understand that some of these things are not culture per se, but they are demonic things that get you initiated into the cultural way of worship. So uh, cultural altars can be raised um, in the demonic world to fight godly altars. If you go to an area that has a cultural altar that has been erected, it is never easy to preach the gospel. The culture always resists the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you seen some communities that it's not easy to preach the gospel? When you get to them, they receive the gospel. They say, our culture, our culture. Why our culture? It is not the culture. It is the altar that is speaking that culture that is resisting the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are other altars. I'm just mentioning. There is what we can call road junction or roundabout altars. Road junction or roundabout altar. Sometimes it doesn't pass our mind when we are going through roundabout. We just think, ah, it's just a roundabout. It is well, you know, manicured. This thing is beautiful. It has a monument on it. And sometimes in our spirit, we are not quick to understand. Sometimes altars are erected at the roundabout or at the junction so that they can speak to the different directions in that area. Do you know a roundabout is a gate? Have you ever checked if you are coming to the city of Nairobi from whichever direction there used to be a roundabout to get to the city? Did you ever notice that? And for us, sometimes we just think, ah, it's just the design. You know, this is the inter inter intersection of the roads. It has to be designed that way. The enemy takes advantage of the junctions and the roundabouts to erect some altars there so that he can read spirit that speaks to all the four directions. That's why as a child of God, if God gives you an opportunity to go around the roundabout, don't just go admiring the beauty and everything. Go out there speaking in tongues. If you're driving around a roundabout, speak in tongues. Worship the Lord in tongues. If you're walking round a roundabout or you're at a road junction, stand at times there and declare that by the anointing of the Lord I declare, no demonic influence, whichever way, on the right, on the left, in front and behind, that shall have power against me or against my family. Because there are altars that at times get erected at the junctions and rolled about. Other altars are erected at the forests. Forest altars. Forest altars. There are altars that are erected in the forest. Those who are fan of Nigerian movies can understand this better. If you become an outcast in some community, where do they send you? Why do you think they send you to the forest just to be eaten by the animal, by the wild animals? No. They are casting you to their gods that you can be sacrificed to their gods in the forests. That's why in some community we have some sacred trees. I know of a community that has stones that cry. The crying stones. And where there is a crying stone, that is a sacred place. Forest altars. There can also be marine altars. Marine altars. These are what are very common with many of us, especially when it comes to the line of deliverance. We see a lot of manifestation of marine spirits. There are altars under the waters. And these altars release spirits. These are the spirit most that are behind spirit husband and, and such uh, demonic bondages. Marine altars. The unaskia wakisema majini. Majini, spirits from the waters. How spirits from the altars, uh, from the waters? Because there is an altar where? At the sea or under the water. Marine altars. I've heard in some communities, you'll hear sometimes animals, they just run away and they go, they drown themselves in rivers and in lakes and in oceans. You just think, ngombe inajipeleka na siyo moja na si mbili, zinaungana zote pamoja zinenda zinengia kwa mto zinabebwa. 
That is not normal. It's an altar that is speaking. It's an altar that is calling for a sacrifice. Hallelujah, church. Marine altars. Other altars are erected at the cemetery, so we call them cemetery altars. Cemetery altars. Just as it's recorded in the Bible, in most of the places where you see a cemetery, there will be a madman roaming around. I don't know whether you have ever noticed that. In any place there is a cemetery, there is always a madman roaming around. Either at the dump site or at the cemetery, there is a madman. Why do you think there is a madman? You, you just see a madman. That is a center of power. There are altars in those places. The altars that manipulate the spirits of the dead. They are stationed at the cemetery. Cemetery, altars. There can be many others. I think the risk can continue. There is sun, moon, and star altars. Munakumuka vitu tulikuwa tunasema ati unatafuta nyota yako kwa gazeti. Timi nirizaliwa jurai. Unaangalia altar yako kwa gazeti. Nasema, hey, hii ni mwezi yangu. Mwezi ya good luck. You are consulting some altars of the creations. The moon, the star, and such. And if you look at the flags of many nations, they have those stuffs. I don't know whether you have ever asked yourself why. Some religions, they have those symbols. I don't know whether you have ever asked yourself why. So there are sun, moon, and star, altars. Let's stop there about altars. There can be a thousand and one kinds of altars because it depends with its purpose and where it is located. Okay? So let's jump from there because that was not our main thing. We are still looking at um, key highlights. Let me give you the next three uh, keynotes on the introduction and God will bless us. The next thing I want you to write, number four, the power of the altar is determined by three things. The power of an altar is determined by three things. Are you ready for the three things? The power of an altar is determined by three things. These are the following uh, things. The three things I'm talking about. One is the deity. The power of the altar is determined by the deity being worshipped at that particular altar. How powerful an altar will be is determined by the deity, the God that is being worshipped. We said an altar is a raised place for worship. It can be worshipped to the living God. It can be worshipped to the gods. Okay? So the power of an altar is determined by the deity that is being worshipped. That's why unasikianga waganga pia wanajuana. Na wanajuana na nguvu zao. Kuna levo inafika unapewa rifaro. <laughs> the deity says, this one, it is not my kind. This one, take it to a higher altar. So the power of an altar is determined by the deity that is being worshipped. And I thank God that in all the altars that can be erected in the world, there is no altar that is higher than the altar that Jesus has raised. He gave his own life. He gave the ultimate sacrifice on that altar. His own life. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus gave his own life on the altar. That's why the altar of Jesus is above all other altars. So the power of an altar is determined, number one, by the deity being worshipped at that altar. Number two, the power of an altar is determined by the priest's dedication and commitment. The priest's dedication and commitment. The priest's dedication and commitment. How dedicated is a priest? How far is he willing to go in terms of his commitment, his personal sacrifices, his, you know, in terms of holiness and other things? How committed is a priest? We can all have altars for God. But the power that emanates from the altar is determined by how the priest of that altar is dedicated or committed to the church. Serving you. The commitment of the ministers that are serving you at the altar, the dedication that they have, it determines the power that emanates from that altar. You cannot be powerful if you are not a man of holiness to serve at the altar. You cannot be effective in serving the altar if you are not a man of prayer and fasting. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Those who want to serve God at the altar, there is no way you'll serve God and be effective unless you are a man and a woman of holiness, a man and woman of prayer and fasting. Because the altar is served by sacrifices. How far are you willing to sacrifice for the priests? the cost number three the power of the altar is determined by the sacrifices offered it's determined by the sacrifices offered at that or on that altar sacrifices offered on the altar the sacrifice that's offered on the altar gives it power That's why you see, even in a church setup, a church that gives is a strong church. Amen? Go look around. A church where people don't believe in giving, even prayer, is a problem. A church that doesn't believe in giving, look at even their structure of worship, their place of worship. It will tell you there is something. Some people think poverty is closely related to humility and holiness. But that is a lie from the enemy. Our God is the owner of everything. And if only we can learn to offer sacrifices, holy and acceptable sacrifices at the altar, there is power that comes from that altar. Praise the name of Jesus. You think God was joking when he gave his best? His one and only on the altar? Offered. That was number four. Now, let me read a scripture that we'll wind up with as I give you number five and six. Give us 2 Kings chapter 3. You're just going to read this. I give you two points. Then we, we pray that God will help us to empower our altars 
for great things to happen in our lives. Second Kings chapter 3, we read verse 26 and 27. Second Kings chapter 3, we read verse 26 and 27. If you get time, read that portion of scripture. It has so much for us. The, the encounter of King Jehoshaphat, King Jehoram, and the king of Edom against the king of Moab. It's a great story. It has a lot of lessons there. But let's pick verse 26 and 27 on interest of time. Can you help me read the word of God? What does the Bible say? And when, let's read it together. One, two, three, go. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could it. Let's read that again, verse 26. Let's read it again. And I pray that God open your eyes to see great things in this scripture. One, two, three, go. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew sword to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stop there first. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, alikuwa nalemewa na vita. Usha ipigana na vita na ukaona inakulemea. Kuna mambo mengangana na ukaona inakulemea. Now, the king of Moab, the Bible says, when he saw that the battle was fierce for him, the battle was getting tough for him, he took with him 700 men who drew sword. Men that were good in battle. And he said, now with these 700 men, I'll be able to pierce. I'll be able to get through to the king of Edom. But the Bible says he could not break through to the king of Edom. Even with 700 men with swords. We are saying altar fights. Altars. Sometimes you can have men behind you. Sometimes you can have money behind you. Sometimes you can have swords behind you. But there are battles you will not win. Praise the name of the Lord. There are battles that are won at the altar. There are battles that are won because there is an altar that speaks on your behalf. There are battles that are won because there is a priest who sacrifices on the altar on your behalf. There is a priest who speaks into your life. So the king of Moab gathered some men and said, Today we are going to break through. Today we are going to overcome the king of Edom. And we are going to have our way. But the Bible says they could not. But listen to the next verse. Verse 27 now. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Verse 27, where are we? Verse 27. Mm -hmm. Second Kings 3.27 These are some of the battles we are talking about. Eh? Let me get to the other one. Second Kings 3. Let me read the NIV. Second Kings 3.27 This is what the Bible says. Verse 27 The Bible says then he took his firstborn son. What did he do? He took his firstborn son who was to succeed him as king and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The folly against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. Let's read again verse 26 and connect it with verse 27. So that you can understand. The Bible says, when the king of Moab, verse 27, 26, when the king of Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom. But they failed. But they did what? They failed. Then he took this king when he saw that there is no way out. What did he do? Then he took his firstborn son who was to succeed him as king and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. Let me just give you a small background for that text. Then we close with two statements. Now, when the three kings came together, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, <laughs> together, with the king of Israel, Jehoram, or Joram, the king of Israel, and the king of Edom, 
But through, uh, through scholarly work, we understand Edom did not have a king at that time. It was just a lura. It was just a man that was working under Jehoshaphat. He was appointed as, as a leader. But we, he, here we hear him being called the king of Edom. So three kings, they gathered together. And what had happened? Mesa, uh, the king of Moab, when Ahab died, because Ahab was previously the king in, in Israel, when Ahab died, Mesa used to be a subject of the king of Israel. And every year, he would send some sacrifice, some offerings, some tributes. Kila mwaka alikuwa napeleka kondo, anapeleka mbuzi, anapeleka pesa. Kwa mfalme. Because alikuwa kolone yake. Yo kolone ilikuwa ya mfalme Ahab. When Ahab died and his son became king, the king of Moab decided, I'm no longer going to be under captivity. Akasema sitoi, nasipeleki, nasipeleki mahali. So Joram was so much agitated. And he looked at the king of Moab and he said, Kukwani yeye ni nani? In the days of our father, he used to bring tribute to us. Why is he dishonoring the agreement they had with our father? So the king of uh, Israel, who is Jehoram, called for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. They combined efforts. And they also picked the king of Edom. And together they went to fight against the king of Moab. But on their way, something happened. They went around one position for seven days. Hello? There was an altar of confusion. You can imagine three kings, wamejiami, wakotayari, wanaenda vitani, kira soja, kochonjo, wamebeba chakula, wamebeba machi, wakotayari, wanaenda vitani, mana ujamana wasumbua. Three kings, together. The forces are combined forces. They said, we are going to fight against this man. He must pay the tribute. But somehow along the way, seven days, they were going around. Seven days, going around. Confusion, will talk about it. Can somebody say altars? Some altars will confuse you. Unajipata hausongi, unazunguka tu say moja. Hausongi, maisha yako imekua tethered because there is an altar that is speaking against you. By the time they were done with the seven days, wakanza kuangalia resources that they had and the Bible says they realized walikuwa meishiwa na maji. So they began consulting. What shall we do? Our animals will die. We cannot be able to fight without water. And they, Jehoshaphat, because he was a man of God, he asked, don't we have a man of God in this area that can speak a word? Don't we have an altar in this area? Don't we have a priest in this area? Ndiyo tukona majeshi. Ndiyo tukona magari zetu za vita. Ndiyo tumejianda. Lakini tunahitaji a word from an altar. Praise the name of the Lord. Tunataka kwenda vita. Lakini na, the way we are seeing things here, we need an altar to speak on our behalf. Hallelujah church. Wengine wetu tunaendanga vitani na huna altar ina speak. Unaenda kuwawa, hauna anointing iko behind you. We umeona tu mtu, msichana ni msupu, unafuata, hauna altar ina speak. Hata pasta wako wajui. Unaona shamba mzuri, you just go, you say, ah, this is a good land. There is no word that is following you. Hallelujah, children of God. Altars fight what? Altars. I heard a story, by the way. Let me, let me just share this story. I can see my time is almost up. But let me share this story. I heard the story. I heard it uh, from Apostle uh, John William Kemani. He says there was a church. Some of these churches that transfer pastors. There was a church that used to transfer pastors. And used to happen, any pastor that was sent to that church would either die or a cross family member die. Every time a pastor is posted in that church, either the pastor dies or a cross member of the family of the pastor would die. And it kept on happening and nobody was even noticing and taking it serious. Then one pastor was sent to that church. He was a man of prayer. It's good to have men of God that are men of prayer. And also to have church that is a church that prays for their servants. Amen. So this man of God was posted in that church. And he was man of prayer. And he, he took time to understand the background. Anytime you go to a new place, understand the background of that place. Okay. Try to study even the name of the area. Try to study the background. Any
anytime you want to marry, study the background of that man. Study the background of that woman. Usione 2v2. Study. So the man of God went to that church. He began studying the background, the history, and he realized there is something that works against this church. And he began praying. And in the process of praying, the Spirit of God. You know the Spirit of God? He reveals the mind of God. He reveals the sacred things. Now, when he was praying, the Spirit of God revealed something to him. And this was the revelation. Where the altar is situated, like here, some years back, a man was killed on that altar. And therefore, blood was crying on that altar. And what did he do? He went before the Lord in prayer and fasting. He canceled the altar that was speaking there, the covenant that was speaking there, and the voice that was speaking, and he said, from now on, there will be no more death from this altar. And it is settled that from that time, no other pastor or a loved one of that church ever died as a result of the voice that was there. What was happening? There was an altar that was speaking. So many pastors lost their loved one because they couldn't understand there is power that speaks at the altar, against the altar and the servants of God. Now, back to our story. So, the servants of, uh, of God, or rather the kings, asked, is there no a man of God in this area? And they remembered Elisha, the man of God, was in that area. So they went and they consulted him to cut the story short, go and get time and read the story. They consulted Elisha. Elisha was mad at them because they had negated the worship of true God. Uh, Joram had followed his father and he was worshipping Baals and other gods. And Jor uh, the servant of God, Elisha, said, if it was not as a result of Jehoshaphat being with you, I would not even have listened to you. But somehow he said something interesting that I love. He said, bring me a harpist. Praise the name of the Lord. Bring me a harpist that he may play some music here. And then I can hear God. Give us verse number 14 of that text so that you can understand. Second Kings 14. I love that portion. I just say a few things then we close the service. He's still hanging. Okay, verse 14 the Bible says, Eresha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of the Hospot king of Judah, I will not look at you or even notice you. But now, bring me a harpist. Praise the name of the Lord. Bring me a harpist. Is there a harpist in the house? Oh, he was asleep. He's awake now. Bring me a harpist. What does the Bible say? While the harpist was praying, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. There is a connection between music and the altar. There is a connection between music and worship. By the way, even here in church, when do we receive prophetic words? Why is it not now? When worship is lifted to Jehovah, there is a word that is from above. Praise the name of the Lord. When true worship, today in the morning we were reading a scripture there in the office that was saying, worship me and I'll bless your water and I'll bless your food and there will be no miscarriage or barrenness in your house. When you worship me, there is something I will do. Hallelujah. So bring me the harpist. I'm angry. I cannot listen to you, Joram. You are a worshiper of idols. But we want to worship Jehovah. We want to change the environment here. You have been worshiping Baals, but here we want to worship Jehovah. Where is the harpist? Can he do something? Let the harpist begin making some beautiful uh, notes there to the Almighty. And the Bible says when the harpist was still praying the harp, the voice of the Lord came upon Elisha. And Elisha spoke a word to the kings. He said, God has dealt with it. Go ahead. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you water. Just go dig ditches. Make ditches in the ferry. Tomorrow I'm going to give you enough water on the ferries. And again, this battle that you're going to fight, you are winning. So a prophetic word was released from the altar when there was worship. Praise the name of the Lord. But this is where I want to stop. Verse 26. 
Do you remember what you have learned in verse 26? What did the Bible say? The king of Moab also gathered strength and prepared his men to stand against men who had a prophetic word. Are you getting the connection? Jehoshaphat, Joram, and the king of Edom, they have visited the altar where Elisha is a priest. Elisha has made some worship with the harpies. He has received a word from the Lord. He released a prophetic word upon them and he told them, go now because the victory is on your side. But when they went to the battlefield and king of Moab also consulted his altar, they began engaging. The Bible says the king of Moab realized he, the battle was fierce for him. Altar fights what? He tried to take seven men, 700 men to fight. But he was fighting with the people that are a prophetic word from the altar. I pray that you may get your word from the altar. I pray that you may get a word from your priest. When the enemy comes with their altars and their gods, they find you have a word. The day you are worshipping, you received a word. So they are fighting a man who has an altar that is speaking. They are fighting a woman who has an altar that is behind him or her. So there was no way the king of Moab would have overcome the Israelites. So when he realized that the battle is too tough, what did he do? Verse 27 we have read. He went, he took his firstborn son who was appointed to be the heir, who was supposed to be the next king and offered him as a sacrifice at the city wall. He invoked a sacrifice. When Jehoshaphat and Joram went to see Elisha, they didn't go with a sacrifice. But somehow, God released a word because of worship. There was sacrifice of worship on the altar and God released a word. When the king of Moab could not stand against the Israelites who had a prophetic word. He realized this battle is so tough. This battle is a battle of the altars. He went to the altar and offered his firstborn son as a sacrifice. What does the Bible say? Let's read the last part of verse 27. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. When a sacrifice of a man was offered on the altar, though Israelites were so powerful, though they had a prophetic word, they returned to their home. Let me say two things, then we close the service. Destinies are shaped or altered at the altar. Destinies are shaped or altered. Altar, they are turning the other way. Destinies are shaped or altered at the altar. Though the Israelites had a prophetic word in operation in their life, the sacrifice of King Mesha heeded the full manifestation of the prophetic. Do you have a prophetic word in your life? Do you have a prophetic word that is working? It can be hidden on the altar if you are not careful. Because if sacrifices are offered on the other side that are higher than what you are offering on your altar, the counter. That's why you should not joke with altar. By the way, giving time. You should always, me, I pity the people who run away when it's time to give. Why don't you give them giving you want to give them a time you are giving you want to give They don't understand. Giving time is a time of shaping your destiny. Giving time is a time of countering your enemies. Their sacrifices that you lay on the altar like King Mesha. Though the enemies were coming even with a word against you. When you offer sacrifice on the altar, they turn their backs away. Never joke with giving. Never joke with sacrifices. Anytime you have an opportunity to offer sacrifice, offer it truly from the heart and say, God, I'll surrender it to you. It will fight for you. So anytime you get a giving opportunity and you are sure the altar that you are giving your offering on is a clean altar, go ahead. Because destinies are shaped or altered at last tree.
just still connected to that number six. Learn to seal your prophetic word or your rema word, your prophetic and rema word with a sacrifice and prayer. Learn to seal your prophetic word and rema word with sacrifices and prayers continually. Run to seal your prophetic and rema word with sacrifices and prayers continually. And we say the ultimate sacrifice is the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ. Always speak the blood of Jesus on your prophetic word. And also you can give a sacrifice that you can to seal your prophetic word. Now you understand why in some altars you see when a word is released, somebody will come to the altar with a sacrifice. Now you understand why. Some of us, we didn't understand and we thought, ah, you ninjaro flani, kampango ingine. The thing is, if you have the spiritual understanding, when your word is released, you seal it with a prayer. Okay? Ukisikia tu vida na hubiri hivi, unasikia pastor yu nineno yangu, seal it with a prayer. Say, that is mine in the name of Jesus. Ata kama majirani wanabaki wanakushanga. Receive it. Amen? If you are compelled and convicted in your heart to give a sacrifice for that word, don't mind whoever is there. Go ahead and give a sacrifice and say, I am giving a sacrifice because today was my day and there was my word. Amen? When a prophet speaks, on this altar by God's grace, we have prophets and more prophets will be coming to minister to us. When a prophet releases a prophetic word, there is a prophetic offering. Seal your prophetic word with a sacrifice. Amen. I know some of us here even they are carrying prophetic words into their lives. God spoke about their destiny. God spoke about them. But they just said, ah, mungu aliongea, ye itatimika. Seal that prophecy. It can be stolen. It can be resisted. When Messiah understood that the battle was fierce for him and he could not fight the Israelites, they had a word, they had a priest that was speaking in their lives. He went to his altar and offered a sacrifice and stopped the Israelites. Your destiny can be altered. Your destiny can be stopped because of a sacrifice. Hallelujah. So always learn to seal your prophetic word. You understand the prophetic word. The Rema word, when you hear me talk about the Rema word, is like now, I'm, I'm reading 2 Kings chapter 3. But from 2 Kings chapter 3, I say some things that may not even be exactly what the Bible says, but you say, ah, I've heard God. I've heard my word. That word is my word. It is that which comes from the scripture and becomes a reality into your life. That is the Rema word. Amen? The scripture as it is, the scripture as you read it, this word, it is the word of God. But from the word of God, you receive your personal word. That's what we call Rema, Rema word. Okay? So I want to stop there. Next week, we are looking at 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, Judges, sorry, Judges chapter number 6. Go ahead and read Judges chapter 6. We'll be able to see the impact of altars. Gideon was meant to be a great man from birth. But because there was an altar at the backyard of his father's house, Gideon was rather to be a poor man that was hiding in the caves together with the other Israelites. Why? There was an altar in their family. And for Gideon to get out, he had to destroy that altar and build another altar. The impact of ungodly altars is our message next week. Let's rise on our feet and pray. Let's be on our feet, please. Just lift up your two hands to the King of Kings. We make a prayer. Father, you are God of altars. You are God of sacrifices. All the way from Genesis, even to the time of giving your son as a sacrifice on the altar of Gorgotha. You have spoken to us today on a few keynotes concerning altars. Father, I pray that you give us deeper understanding. By your spirit, even as we leave this service today, take us deeper to understand the things that pertain to altars and sacrifices. Father, today we have, rem we have been reminded that altar stands against altars. Battles are won or lost at the altar. Today you have reminded us, King of Kings, 
that destinies are shaped or altered at the altar. You have taught us today that it is important to seal our prophetic words with a sacrifice and again with prayers. I pray that these words will sink deeper in us. And Lord, as we practice, Lord, you shall do great things. And today in the name of Jesus, any altar that I've been standing against God's people, any altar that I've been speaking like the altar of Messiah, stopping, diverting, distracting the destinies of God's people, I command it now to break. I command it to bow to the altar of the living God. I command it to bow to the altar of the living God. Any altar that I've been speaking against your destiny, today, in the name of Jesus, I command it to bow. In the name of Jesus, any ungodly altar that was initiated in the bloodline, any ungodly altar that was initiated in the religious circles, any ungodly altar that was initiated through the cultural practices, today, in the name of Jesus, I command it to bow. I command it to bow now. I command it to bow now. I command it to bow under the authority of the name of Jesus. Every demonic altar that have been active in the people of God's in God's people life today by power and authority I command every altar to break when you called Jeremiah you told him to go destroy uproot and break all ungodliness and now with power and authority and with the anointing from on high and as a stand of this altar as a priest to the living God and in the name of Jesus I command every evil altar break in the name of Jesus every ungodly altar bow and give way to the authority of the name of Jesus. Father, I release your anointing to set people free from ungodly influences. Set your people free from the influence of ungodly altars. Father, whatever was raised against us, whatever was said against us, we cancel by the blood of Jesus. We cancel by the blood of Jesus. Any word that was ever spoken against our lives, against our destinies, on ungodly altars, we arrest and cancel. We speak the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus against us as we cancel every word, every word, every voice that was ever released against our lives, against our children, against our destinies. We cancel by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And therefore, daddy, we declare your people are free to serve you. Your people are free to serve at the altar. Any altar that have been stopping them from being faithful to serve you. Any altar that have been speaking, drawing them behind from serving you at your altar. We is destroyed today in the name of Jesus. I decree your people are freed to serve. They are freed to worship. They are freed to enjoy the blessings of the Lord over their lives. Father, I bless you and I exalt you. For this word is our word. We make it active in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. And the church said, Amen. Why don't you put your hands to the King of Kings? We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate the King of Kings. I want you to make a personal declaration. Make a personal declaration against any altar that have been speaking in your life. Any ungodly altar. Just make a personal declaration. Just as the Spirit of God gives you utterance now. Make a personal declaration. Speak to any ungodly altar. Zwe ni za baba yako, za mama yako, za uko wenu. Any ungodly altar. Make a declaration. Tangaza kwamba hazita kuwa na nguvu kinyume na maisha yako. Hazita kuwa na nguvu kinyume na kesho yako. Kira madhabahu ambayo iliinuliwa kinyume na wewe. Kira madhabahu ambayo iliinuliwa kinyume na jamii yenu haita kuwa na nguvu Haita kuwa na wezo tena Kinyume na maisha yako Tunatangaza ushindi Tunatangaza ushindi Sizi ni washindi Damu ya yesu inatosha Damu ya yesu imeripa garama We are freed by the blood of Jesus Damu ya yesu inatosha 
Hey, we declare the blood of Jesus. 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 Blood of Jesus. Over, over our lives by the blood of Jesus. There is no covenant. There is no altar. There is power against our lives. There is power against our destiny. There is power against our ministries. Today declare no word that was ever spoken against PMI Ficarod that will work against us. I cancel any word spoken against this altar. Now that altar fights altars, let this altar rise. Let this altar rise and surrender any altar speaking against it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. For this is our prayer today. And our declaration in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the church said, Amen, Amen to the King of Kings and glory to the Lord of Lords. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep fighting for you as the word of God says that Moses told Joshua, uh, said, let this inscription be written and be shared with Joshua because God will fight against the Amarek from generation to generation. Let God arise and fight your battles. Let God arise and fight your battles. Even from generation to generations in the name of Jesus Christ. We can take our seats and be able to give our offerings. Let's take our seats and be able to honor God with our offering and our sacrifices. As the Lord leads you, we really encourage you to go to the m -Pesa, to go to your account and do a bank transfer to the account that is on the wall, the account that's given on the screen. But if you need an envelope, if you need to be able to give the normal way, the door is still open. Just shoot up your hand. You'll be assisted with an envelope. And we encourage you, once you deposit in the back account, once you send an m -Pesa to the church account, send us a message. Let us know uh, what you have given. Let us know what you have supported. Is it an offering? Is it a tithe? Is it an altar sacrifice? Is it a support of any department in the church? Let us know what you have given to the glory of the Lord. God bless you and God be with you as you honor the Lord with your sacrifices. I'm just waiting for you to be ready so that we can pray. After this, we are having, I think, five or ten minutes to be able to support uh, one of uh, the sons of this house, Brother Kush, uh, who is uh, having his wedding here on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, sorry. So having his welding here on Saturday, we'll give you an opportunity to be able to support him as the Lord has enabled you. So we give this offering, then I'll give Maxwell an opportunity to be able to receive uh, what you are prepared to support Kush with. Tundasamanga, uh, kama uh, ungependa, kama ungependa uh, kusapotiwa, support. Kama ungependa siku moja usapotiwe pia na wewe. Learn to support. Kama una, unaaminia mungu arusi. Ukisikia mtu anafanya arusi. Wakati wote. Be there. Be the first one to support. Amen. Unlock your blessings. If you want your children to be married. When other young men. Other people's children are marrying. Be there. Be a supporter. And unlock your blessing. This is the way to go. And this is what our family church is. And this is what our family church does. Can we pray for the offerings? Let's pray. Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you for today. We bless you for giving us an opportunity to serve you with substances and sacrifices that you've given unto us. We give back to you with thanks. We give back to you with joy. And we ask the Lord that you may bless us and bless the work of our hands. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory and honor. For this we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So you'll have the freedom just to come and drop your sacrifices on this altar. And then after that, Mark, Maxwell will be able to come and be able to guide us on how we are supporting uh, Kush on preparation for his wedding. Just to remind you, services are still on. We thank God now we are back on, on air, or rather we are back online soon on air. Amen. You are in the sleeping of the tongue. We'll be on air by the grace of God. Amen. PMI TV is coming in Jesus' name. PMI TV is coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God for being back online. Uh, tumekua hatujakua kwa muda. Labda wengi hawa kujua. Uh, camera ambao tulikuwa tunatumia iliweza kuibiwa na some laptops uh, zikaibiwa na vitu zingine. Lakini mungu wa maajabu ameturejesha. So tunakila sababu ya kumshukuru, tunakila sababu ya kumuinua kwa yale ametenda. Tunamgeni siku ya leo.
Tuna mgeni siku ya leo wewe ni mgeni wetu tungependa tukutambue our guest today Yes we have a guest behind there Nakubalia 